What was she thinking? Obviously she wasn't, obviously she wasn't. Happy day, great people, let's get right into this video. I know you have been seeing, I know you have been seeing what has been going on and this kind of dropped last month. It really exploded, but I wanted to talk about Ruby Frank as well as her counterpart, business partner, associate, um, thought leader, Jody Hildebrand. By me <clears throat> having such a desire and a passion for positive youth development, when I, when I saw this situation, I couldn't do anything but be empathetic. I have an article I wanted to discuss. I don't want to talk about any of videos. It's been out for a while. And many of you who, who are on YouTube, watch YouTube, <clears throat> probably already know about this story. So why am I bringing it up now? I think one of the videos I just dropped recently was about what was been going on with P. Diddy and how his actions have impacted his children. And the same thing with this situation here. This is very controversial. And for a while, it was said that allegedly um, Ruby Frank had already been <clears throat> It was already identified that people felt that she was a little rougher on her kids. Let me just go ahead and say they felt like she was abusing her children a while ago, years ago. Now, I want to speak to this before I, I, I just tap into this article. When it comes to discipline, I support discipline. I sure do. I grew up with it. My parents didn't abuse me. They didn't beat me. I did get spankings a couple of times from my mama. <laughs> my daddy just, you know, he did. He went with me. He did smack me across my face once when I was 16 or 17 because my mouth was just <laughs> too much. And I got popped in the lip, popped in the mouth one time with a busted lip from my mom from talking too much. However, growing up with the, in a black parent home, my parents, you know, they were going to stand their ground. You were not going to run over them. Now, it's different today. I, I noticed how it's, it's changed. You do have some people who still feel that discipline is a must and they're going to handle their kid to let them know you are my child. You don't run me. I am the authority figure. Does that mean your child has to be spanked or talked harsh upon? No, every kid is different. And as a parent, you have to gauge that. You have to be the expert, even though parenting takes, you know, a lot of ongoing growth development will, you know, and I'm just shouting all these positive qualities out about parents that I know who are pretty dope. And I know many of my viewers are, are parents who are great parents because we engage in the comment section. So I just want to say, I'm definitely not bashing the parents. However, I feel as though this could have been prevented. And I really feel for the children. However, on the flip side, I want to say I do understand some of the strategies that she was trying to implement initially. I watched a couple of the videos. I watched her saying, because I have a, por a poetry program for kids with behavior challenges and academic deficits, and they're different types of children. There are children with diagnoses. There are children with diagnoses of, it's a wide range, but when it comes to behavior problems, emotional problems, you know, that is that kid is going to diff be different in their continence and their temperament and how they engage with authority figures, how they respect the parent. All, all that's going to be different compared to your child that does not have those challenges, problems, those diagnoses. Now, some of them don't have diagnoses and they choose to be that way because I don't feel that every kid that has that acts out or or acts a certain way necessarily needs a diagnosis. I'm not a psychologist. Let's first be clear on that. No, I'm not. But my master's degree is in applied development of psychology and we set a development of the lifespan and so forth and so on. And I feel that disciplining the child accordingly in a way that is not going to berate them that is not going to tear down their self-confidence their self-esteem should be highly considered when you discipline your kid is the kid going to like it all the time I mean or period no and there and it's also a learning experience for the parent as well the parent is definitely not going to always do this the right the most um, beneficial way let me say that because parents can discipline their kids all day long and still not be abusive most definitely but when you start to become abusive and you really are really you know just being outlandish with it so what is it what do I feel a form of abuse is from parental discipline is smacking the kid in the face that's not necessary. You can hit them on the back of their hand. If you want to spank their bottom, if you want to pop their leg, if you want to pop their arm, 
But smacking the kid in the face to me is unacceptable. You don't have to do that. That's not a proper way to discipline your child. If you want the child to still to learn from the whatever the situation is and have a high self-esteem and grow up to be a pro-social adult. Now, I'm going to just tell you some good news. There's some kids you can whoop 800 times, boo, and they ain't, it's not going to phase them, and they're going to do the same thing <laughs> tomorrow because I know that person, okay? That was my husband, child, when he was a kid. Boo, boo. And my husband is a great guy. He really is. But when he, he was a busybody little boy, he really was. And he, he did not listen, okay? And he would push the envelope and test the waters, okay? You, he could have got 50 limb whoopings. Y'all know what I mean by 50 limb. He got 50 limb whoopings and it meant, it meant nothing. The next day, he was back doing the same thing he got his tail tagged for. So if, if that's the case, we know with that child, we have to do something else because that's not working. Let me pull up this article. So the article here that I just want to highlight on, and I do want my parents to chime in about what they, what you all felt in regards to, you know, what you heard about this. If you know about the story, I'm sure many of you do. You know, how did you feel about some of this? And when I, when I saw, wait a minute, my bad, y'all, I hit the wrong button. Hold on. When I saw, um, <clears throat> when I saw this, Okay, there y'all know I be having technical difficulties over here. When I saw the video of the 12 year old boy going to a neighbor's house because he escaped the window, I was just floored. I, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Whatever the kid did, duct tape, duct taping the kid ain't it. Period. No means, no how. If you feel as though you got to resort to that, ex that horrible method, then you need to be considering about calling the state, calling some state agencies in your home. So you may need to give up your parental rights for a little while. So you can regroup and get some parenting classes, counsel, mentorship, anything that's going to allow you to do to discipline your, ch your child, you know, promote some consequences, choices, reward based system, all these things that will work if you apply them Keyword, I had a parent that I worked with with her little girl and she was telling me that, oh, it's not working. It's not working because you're not working it. You're not working it. Everyone who comes in contact with your child, if you have your child on a behavior modification plan, need to be on board. So if you go into your grandmama house, grandma needs to have everything that you're doing with your, with your kid at home. Your teacher needs to have this. They go into after school program. After school program need to have this. If your child is still in chorus, are you allowing them to be in extracurricular activities even though their behavior says they have not earned it? Because my child would not be. But if you decided to still do that, then when, they, when they're going to this extracurricular activity, you need to have the person on board. And if not, that is where the gaps in the plan is going to fail because they're going to be able to say, hey, well, I can do this over here and get away with it. I'm OK. But when they come back home to you, it's, it's not it's not going to work because there have been some gaps. They've been able to get some of those rewards at these other places that you're not giving them at home. So no, ma'am. So. When I saw that little boy being so thin and then I saw where the girl was in the closet and how she sat there and how she was so thin. I, 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 I mean, I, I, my eyes was watering. You know, it, it really was. I, I couldn't even keep it together for a moment because I'm like, how does a parent wrap their mind, a person wrap their mind around being that way to a kid? And I, I mean, I, everybody just does not need to have the ability to have kids. I'm sorry. and I'm going to say that they don't. Every adult person that has that makes the choice of having a kid doesn't need to have one because if you're not going to treat the kid accordingly and raise the kid to the best of your ability and that means even if you make mistakes that you're going to learn and you're going to get help because there is no map guide to parenting but it's, it's learning and growing and being better as you grow as you go along the way but when I saw that I, I, I couldn't even keep it together because there's something else that's going wrong so what happened to her as a little girl I mean it, it could go way back however I'm going to say this and I'm going to tap into this article. I kind of understand where she was trying to go, but she just missed it. I saw a video where the son had played a prank on one of the little brothers and she wanted to, you know, make the older son pay consequences. And he lost his bed. He lost he lost being able to sleep on his bed. OK, that's not harsh because I've had parents once again who have kids that would run run circles around the kids that she has based off some of the things that I've I read and, and saw that they, they, they that they did. It was crazy. These kids with behavior challenges and emotional 
um, deficits. These kids are on a whole nother spectrum. So if the parent chooses to say, hey, you know what? Well, having a bed is a privilege. And by law, of course, parents have to provide what? Food, shelter, water. You got to make sure they go to school. Does it have to be designer? <laughs> no. Does it have to be steak, shrimp, um, spaghetti, and whatever else they like? No, but it has to be food so they can be nourished and they can eat. Yes. <clears throat> now, when they sleep on a bed or when they sleep, it needs to make sure. I mean, you need to have comforter, pillow, sheet, you know, all of that. Some people don't have some people who are less fortunate don't may, may not even be able to buy a bed, a mattress for the kids. Sometimes they make a pallet on the floor. What you know about that pallet? How about making a pallet on the floor when you go to a sleepover? You know, is is that is that mindset? So having the, him sleep on a sleeping bag and not in his bed, um, not sleeping bag, bean bag, because of the behavior she felt she didn't appreciate. I don't think that was bad. I, I I don't I don't feel that was abuse because if the kid is tearing up and they don't understand the fact they have everything because of you and they own nothing and you allow them to continue to tear up and they don't they don't recognize and they don't get it. Oh, OK. Well, your bed is a privilege. You don't know how to un, you don't understand that. So you can have a mattress because it's still technically a bed. It's a place to sleep and a pillow. Now, do you need the bed frame and the box spring and all that? No, technically you don't. You put them on a beanbag boot with some sheets and a pillow. There you go. However, I don't feel as though the kids behaviors were as extreme and extenuating as she from what I saw and part of what I read. Now, it was alleged that her practices didn't really shift and adjust until she met the thought leader. So let's get into this article. What we know about the mommy vlogger accused of child abuse. My question is, if it was so outlandish to people, why didn't they do other things prior? And maybe they did. I know there was the man that was in the who who called the police for the little boy. He said there had been problems before down at um, Jody's house. <clears throat> so it was already alleged that there had been some problems or reports of abuse or maltreatment, but yet nothing was done. Utah mommy vlogger Ruby Frank was one was once best known for her now defunct YouTube channel Eight Passengers, on which she documented family life with her husband and their six children. Then in December, she pleaded guilty to four counts of aggravated child abuse. News of Frankie's guilty plea came roughly three months after she and her husband. I'm sorry. She and her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt, were arrested and slapped with a suit of charges after Frankie's malnourished 12 year old son escaped from a window of Hildebrandt's home and showed up at a neighbor's door asking for food and water. So let's talk about this method right here. Starving your kids ain't it. I'm sorry. It's not. They need to eat. They need to eat. Yes, they do. But what they eat is a question. If you want to use food as a reward or consequence based type of discipline, then they don't have to have what they like all the time. If your kid loves meat and love pizza, okay, give them a veggie dinner. Boo, give them all vegetables. How about that? Now, I like ramen noodles with veggies and eggs and all that. So giving a kid some ramen noodles may not be it. They may, that might be up their alley. So you have to get creative with the parent and to say, okay, well, if you give your child's, I don't know, toaster strudels or pop tarts or whatever that thing is they love and they like to eat for breakfast in the morning, you switch it up to let them know, okay, well, when you do great and you don't cause me problems and become a thorn in my side, because I tell kids all the time, parents love to do things and reward their kids who have pleasing behavior, who follow their instructions the first time, that do what they ask, that perform well in school by following the teacher's direction, by trying, doing your all, blah, 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 blah. But malnourished means they weren't being fed and that's inappropriate. That's, that's, that's not the right method to use. Switch it up instead of giving them Pop tarts, <laughs> give them raisin bran. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know how many kids like raisin bran, but you know what I'm trying to say. The neighbor called the police, who in their affidavit later described the boy as emaciated. He allegedly had open wounds on his body and duct tape wounds around his ankles and wrist. By any means, by no means, please, people, please, I don't care how mad, I don't care how mad your your you get don't do that don't do that don't do that please don't do that don't do that i don't care how mad my mom and dad got at me they never thought <laughs> well if they did they didn't they didn't try it. but you know what i'm saying my parents you know i don't know black parents don't play many of them now we have some that still allow their kids to be the authority figure but when i was growing up 
Child, please. Child, please. Child, please. And white parents, too. Let me not just say that. But I do know, especially for black and Hispanic parents, they wouldn't think twice about laying, them, laying that hand across that tail. No, they didn't. But they never, they never would have thought about duct taping. No, my daddy snatched all my stuff away <laughs> when I was not following directions in high school. Well, my own line came out, he killed that. Uh, and he said, you keep on, I'm going to take this door off the hinges. Because remember now, you don't own, you don't own nothing. This ain't your door, this is my door. And I'll take it off the hinges. I was like, dang that, dang that. Okay, I'm just saying. So if it gets to be that deep, take a privilege away. Take a fun activity away. Don't do that. Now it says, <clears throat> investigators also found Frankie's 10-year-old daughter in the house, Hildebrand's house, similarly malnourished. According to police, both children appear to be in her direct care of Frankie's knowledge. At the time, the children were taken to the hospital and put under the care of Utah's Department of Child and Family Services, along with their two minor siblings. Frankie and Hildebrand, meanwhile, were initially charged with six counts each of felony abuse. So I kind of wanted to go down a little further. So some of the charges they were charged with was multiple physical injuries or, or torture, starvation or malnutrition that jeopardizes life, causing severe emotional harm, emotional e emotional emotional harm which is completely unacceptable emotional harm because as they grow up these situations and instances are going to impact them in a negative way counseling therapy of course is of the utmost is what they need of the utmost attention but we also have to also think about if there's something in question you know what why why are we waiting so late even if a person is considered a youtuber or someone prominent in the content creation space and they're putting things out there. If you feel as though this is, you know, you question this, then do your due diligence in reaching out, you know, contacting the authorities in this person's, I don't know how you can reach them in that state, but generally there's non-emergency numbers to call to be able to reach, you know, other agencies in that state where you may ha have questions, ask questions, you know, okay, so what is this? Okay, well, check this video out. What do you think about this? You know, it, especially people as as parents, you know, many of you can can feel and be empathetic and still feel the same way for these kids. And you'd be like, there's no way you would have done that to your child. So we have to also look at mental health when it comes to her. And where did it shift? Where did it shift? And these kids went on for a long time with this. Let's see. Viewers of A Passions. Here it says right here. Um, reports that two of Frankie's charges were dropped as a result of her plea agreement. Viewers of but viewers of eight passengers had accused Frankie of child abuse long before she was taken into custody, citing cruel parenting techniques, food as punishment. News of Frankie's arrest last year was met with relief from her sisters, fellow parenting influencers and um, other people, I guess, on Instagram. There were statements and the eldest daughter and estranged daughter. Well, the eldest and strange and the estranged daughter shared a, a similar sentiment on social media, which they said they they put in their story. Finally, that was after her arrest. So my thing is, don't allow something to go on for so long. If you feel in question, encourage the person to get the help that they need, because it's it was said and you can check out some of the videos for yourself from the there's a, there a video a channel law and court um had a couple of videos that i watched um you can also get some reputable content from other news sources as well to check out to you know fact check however she had a shift and i will say this she made a statement which means she was able to to, to she's able to come she's starting to she was coming out of the trance a spell that she was under because that's exactly what happened and it's sad that the kids had to experience that and she allowed herself to have that life changing tra trajectory the trajectory of her life has shifted because she connected with the person that she allowed to alter her thinking alter her behavior and to mistreat her children so there we definitely have to pray and i'm going to keep saying that we have to pray for people that they will break free and come back to reality. They, they will come back to God, to Christ and who he is and how he wants us to discipline what his methods are. And he may not be specific in the Bible. It does tell you to, to, to discipline your kid. Don't allow your kid to be out here wilding out. No, that's unacceptable. You're responsible as a parent. You are responsible. Your child should not be out here being a menace to the classroom, to uh, other nonprofit organizations that they are members of. They shouldn't be a they sure not surely not shouldn't be a menace 
in your home. And if you feel as though you can't control your kid, you have rights and you can reach out for help as well. And I'm also an advocate for that. If your kid thinks that they want to run things and they actually paying some bills and they actually doing something to take care of their survival and they're not because some kids are forced to do grown up things a little bit sooner, a lot sooner than they should be. However, if you're responsible and you're taking care of the kid the best way you can and providing for your kid the best way you can and the kid is not, they want to do their own thing. Okay, I got a trick for you then, boo. I'm going to call the state. They're going to come pick you up and you're going to stay in a group home for a little while. How about that? How about you? How about that? All the little privileges you have, all the things that you have that you don't have to worry about being stolen or have to worry about somebody taking or, or any of that. The whole mindset and lifestyle of being in a group home ain't nothing like being in your home with your parents. So there are so many options and things that parents can do for themselves and their own protection. And if you have kids in the home as well for their protection as well. But now mistreating the kid, abusing the kid is not it. And when parents do that, it's something within them that needs help that needs healing, that needs support. And if they can't reach out, then people around them need to be the one to, for the sake of the child, especially to, to put it out there on front street and reach out to an agency for them. That's how I feel about that. Let them know, let them know. Yeah. Let them know. You would have done your due due diligence. You feel good about it because at least you're trying to help prolong the, the kid's life and save the parent from going to jail or whatever else. You know what I'm saying? So we have to continue to pray and also send love to the kids. And hopefully that they're going to now, this has been exposed and she has been made aware of what she was doing was completely, completely out of line, completely out of line. She gave a statement and she admitted that, you know, what she was doing was just, she was completely out of touch. She was horrible and she was so sorry. And now maybe she can begin this healing journey and find her way back to Christ the way that he tells us to walk and not another way that seems so um, strict and stern and, you know, inhumane. So, okay, parents, I want to chime in about that. Let's get in this comment section on this channel. We love ourselves. We think for ourselves and we grow ourselves. So I hope this is something that can help someone that can benefit from, you know, if you have questions, if you need support, reach out. There's an email address in um, on in my description. You can definitely reach out to me. I have resources. I definitely don't mind sharing resources with parents, giving tips as well. Once again, I'm not a licensed psychologist, but my master's degree is in in developmental psych and youth development. Child development is an area that I studied. Now, we got a sale going on, great people. We are having 30% off of our site. Look in the description below, digdeeper.com slash creator. Don't quote me on the site because it's a little long, but check out in the description. It's right here on the screen. Click it, get some gear. We have some amazing, amazing scripture-based um, wear. Also, some Seaborn one Snapper wear. Let me know what you think. Chime in. I appreciate your support. And I'll see you on the next episode of Snapper Speaks. Yeah.